Welcome back to the channel. I'm Nate Bissell and this is Bissell Maple Farms YouTube channel and we're a maple syrup company and it's getting to be maple syrup time. Step in here, we are, uh, this is our sugar works where we boil down and make maple syrup. We also bottle maple syrup. I'm here collecting some pieces and parts for Austin who's out tapping trees today and he needs um, Gripples. You always run out of gripples. So I'm here grabbing, it says sold individually. I'm robbing from my own store. I'm going to take a few out. Hold on. I got to let them know though. They count everything. They do not mess around. You know what? That, sorry about that. Anyways, uh, thanks for stopping by the channel. I'm running some errands and uh, the episode you're about to watch, um, Austin is a uh, out at Camp Beaumont where we have 6,500 taps and he is explaining the difference between the different types of drops that we use. We use a stubby uh, and we also use a, uh, st a stubby adapter. So those are check valve adapters or non-check valve. Uh, we like the stubbies. We don't like cutting spouts off every year. Um, shortens the, the, the actual drop and also takes an extra step or two. So, uh, we like to do what takes the least amount of labor for our team. And uh, if you know anything about the uh, job market right now, it's uh, anything you can do to make your team more efficient and uh, mm -hmm. make it easier on them, the better. And uh, I think it's going to be that way forever and ever. Amen. So that's kind of the way it's going to be. Anyways, we also want to talk to you about um, last year we made a video. Let me put these in my pocket before I forget. If anybody from the Bissell Maple Farm team sees that, I took six, six gripples. So last year we made a video where people sent their pictures of their sugar house, which did really well and we're getting a lot of feedback and people asking, hey, when are you gonna make another episode with uh, our sugar house pictures? And you know, Jacob and I were talking about it and you know what we'd like to do? We would like to do some video of your sugar houses and here's my request or our request. If you could send us a video to Bissell on yt at gmail.com, the uh, uh, email address is right here in the, on the screen. In order to meet the requirements to be on, uh, on the montage that we'll make, it needs to be two minutes or less. It needs to be done in landscape. So no vertical, vertical film. So it needs to be done in landscape. It cannot be in 4K or UHD. Um, we only do 10. 1080p so at this at this juncture so those are the requirements you have two minutes to tell your story you have uh two minutes to give us a little uh tour of your sugar house and uh, uh or maple operation or sugar shanty or cookhouse or whatever you call it um trailer park that's my favorite that's a large maple operation that is in the back of old semi truck trailers and uh they can make a lot of syrup at a trailer park. So I'd like to see one of those too. You know who you are. Anyways, if you could send us a two minute video of your operation, um, we'll be glad to make a video uh, of all of uh, you, the subscribers and uh, viewers of this channel. I think it'd be pretty cool. So anyways, on with the episode, catch you at the end. All right, man, where are we at Austin? Oh. Today we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you what we're doing with cutting taps off, putting new spouts on, and our new project going to stubbies and putting new drops in, so. So what is this sugar bush, what do we call this? This is Beaumont, the Beaumont Scout Reservation. We have a 65-ish, 6,500-ish tap operation here. So we're, uh, the big map is not actually correct. It has some errors in it. So we go off of this one. Tap counts off, but other than that, it's pretty good. So, so what are all those stars, Austin? Every star is a set of sap ladders. When Beaumont, you say set, do you mean like one? I think... Doesn't it go three, like three, two, one? Not always. So okay. like that one, I think that, I think if it's a single, I don't know if that one's three or two. Gotcha. These are... What you're saying is yeah. every star may not represent yeah, one Yeah, it's not set. like there's one set of... There's not one star at each star. This is where... So all the stars are. could be 
one set. Why do we have sap ladders here, Austin? Because Beaumont is not like a lot of sugar bushes around. It's super, super flat, which presents its own challenges, but also has its benefits. I mean, there's some places out in your dad's woods, a couple, not a lot, but a couple places that it's not very fun to tap. It's not very fun to climb up the hill, stand on the edge of that kind little of, cliff. Yeah, I got you. And so, I mean, it has that going for it, but it also means we don't have any natural slope for sap to run. So to help out the vacuum, you have to get your far end high and your near end low. And when you're covering that much ground, you don't have enough slope to do it all in one shot. So you run it from about this high at one end to just above the ground. And then you put in a set of sap ladders, sap ladders make it easier to lift the sap from the bottom up. So you have a star on the bottom. I think they're each five prongs, star on the bottom, star on the top and five sixteenths inch line that connects them. The idea being that the vacuum can pull sap up through the narrower tubing easier. But lately there's been some research that says maybe not. Uh, we don't know. So we're playing around with some other stuff, but that's what we have. It we're works. Jumper them, right? That was kind of the idea. Yeah. So we've heard some research that says you can actually run a three quarter inch line in a big S curve from the bottom up and that the vacuum will pull it up just fine. With the sap ladders still with, with the sap ladders hooked up. Uh, some people have said you could probably do it without the ladders hooked up even. I don't know how that would work. I, if that's the case, I'm not really sure why it is, but. So, so where are we at? What's this building? Call this the warming shed. It's just a nice heated place. We I got see it's organized. Who baseball. Did all that? Yeah, right? It's, I mean, we keep did it. Did Fred come in here and organize it? <laughs> we keep it immaculate. Yeah, no, like it, it is way more organized than normal. <laughs> we are here. Sap tanks, warming shed, everything's right there. So all these lines have the old spouts cut off and new spouts cut on, or not cut on, but put on. And then these lines have old spouts cut off, put on. And these lines are what we're gonna replace with drops. All but line number one in the orange have new spouts on them. I'm gonna finish that today. So with this video of making drops, we can actually do an example of what we used to do, uh, or what we do is mm -hmm. cut, cut a spout off. Now we didn't set this woods up. Right. This is something that we we are contracted to manage and we boil the sap. We did not set these <laughs> woods up. We inherited them. So I wanna be clear, this is not, you know, a Bissell Maple Farm install. This is a Bissell Maple Farm try to make it better. Is that a good way to put it? Yeah. Like we've that done a lot of improvements to make this we have okay. the last couple of years but this and we've not. seen we're seeing returns on that our average vacuum level last year was much much higher than it had been in the past and and it'll probably be even better this year because of the jumpers but it takes one cfm per sap ladder mm -hmm. so how many sap ladders do we have we have to run 200 it's cfm just for sap ladders here. 50 something so 6500 taps and we have to run 300 cfm just to have 100 cfm to run the actual sap production yeah, right so a lot of it's used up in lifting sap that's just part of it and it's the downside but uh yeah you earn every drop here that's for sure do you know what year this was installed like how long ago it's been installed i don't we've this is what year three for us oh it's more than that this is my third season in the woods oh my gosh so we're probably it might have been the first year though when you were there no really boy yeah. it's been like because fred was talking about this stuff they had had to fight. I think they did it at least one season before me and maybe two. Gotcha. So what would that put this at like an eight year old? Eight to 10. Eight to I, 10. Almost 10. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 10. Point being. Tubing's the, getting old. Tubing's getting old. Some of the stuff in here that's not quite right. Some of it I think was just set up wrong out of ignorance. Some of it was probably set up that way thinking that that was the standard at the time. I yeah, mean, things do get better. Things get better, and a lot of research can come out in 10 years that tells you to do things differently. So yeah. so we are going to partner with farm blocks here. Uh, we're going to add 32 sensors at the end of every main line. The plan is, is to put 32 sensors at the end of every main line so you can track your vacuum, which I think is going to be easier than what we have now. So farm blocks is going to help us out. I think they're coming out the 26th of January, and we're going to install those and also put um, uh, level sensors here. So, yeah, 
Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to playing with the farm block sensors, seeing what they can do. Yeah, they're here to help, and I definitely yeah. think it's gonna make us make our lives a little bit easier. And yeah, um, for those of you who don't know, farm blocks is a, a monitoring system. They do a lot in uh, agriculture, uh, greenhouses. Um, the sensors are used even in like high rises for apartment complexes and maple is just um kind of a good fit that's that's what i'm learning you know what makes them interesting is that like every other monitor system like leaders monitor system cdl's monitor system they all got developed for maple farming these guys have developed systems for other agricultural use, you know, for produce, for whatever. And because of that, they've developed a much wider range of monitoring technologies. So when they were here and they, I walked them around, I was throwing stuff at them, just not even stuff we necessarily want them to do, but just stuff I was throwing at them to see what they can do. It's amazing what they... Yeah, so they're smart guys. The, the, our sap tanks over here have curved bottom. Mm -hmm. So you put a monitor sensor on it. Well, the percentage fill level that it gives you is always a little bit off yeah because it can't account so one of the things i actually said to those guys is hey this is an issue you have you can't trust that percentage number it gives you a rough ballpark but because of the curve bottom you know the percentage is wrong is this something that could be accounted for and they kind of looked at each other you know and talk back and forth they said not right away but it's definitely something we could work on and probably could have a solution for yeah that's it. interesting. It's like they're just super willing to try to find a way to help out yeah any way they can now i'm not dissatisfied with the cdl monitor system we no it's we were a leader dealer and you know five six years ago we decided to go with well probably four 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 years ago for, yeah, we went with the CDL unit because the, the what was op offered by Leader did not seem like a good solution. I didn't hear a lot of positive feedback and turned out to be that was a good move. And uh, Mike Lynch and now Jared Sutton, those guys are good dudes. And um, I've been happy with the mm -hmm. CDL systems. Um, it is a, kind of a more expensive. Yeah. I have never, Mike installed everything. I have never had a, a question that Mike couldn't answer. No, that's the thing. Yeah, Mike, like, I've had to get a hold of him a couple times, and he's always been able to. Yeah, help like us we're out. not dissatisfied with it. Um, it's just double the cost. So, I think that's what we're looking at is uh, to give the team like labor so important to give them the tools now to be more efficient. So, any automation, any information, um, we used to go out and chase leaks with our ears. <laughs> it's kind of nice to know where they're at before you even start chasing leaks. So, um, anyways, that's a lot of information about Camp Beaumont. Yeah, we just kind of rambled yeah, for a couple minutes. It's there. okay. Uh, no one on YouTube has actually seen this operation. I, I uh, focused primarily on my dad's property last year, the 2000 taps there. This is, uh, you know, this is the larger, uh, more of the labor. Like my dad's woods is easy. Yeah, that's I've, why so, I was taking care of the easy one. Austin was taking care of the hard one. <laughs> so for reference, I've spent one day in your dad's woods. I just did a general walk through, cleared lines a little bit, made sure we didn't need any major chainsaw work. It was all pretty good. Our down down limbs this year for some reason weren't that bad. Hmm. So don't need any chainsaw work out there. We can go into immediately tapping and we'll be in that woods roughly a week, maybe a little more. I think it took us seven working days last year to tap, but that was also on 18 inches of snow. Interesting. So I, I'm hoping we can get that down to about five working days. This you know what year. I should do? I think I'm going to bring a tripod so I don't have to hold this thing. <laughs> Your arm getting tired? Yeah. Yeah. This cool. is like kind of awkward. Oh, look what we got here. Drops. Phil's been doing it. He's been pounding them out. Yeah. And we've really set that thing up too. I think he's happy. But so we're going to cut off spouts like we always do here. And then we want to go to stubbies. We'll have you explain out by the tree why on each one. So. so this is the old way. This is the way most of the woods is set up and what we're about to change. So you have these in line, your standard spouts. For bacterial reasons, every year we have to come through and cut those off. So you just take a pair of shears, bam, cut them off. So we'll spend probably about a week every year just walking through, cutting them off. And that's one trip. I'll usually have a big pouch like this. I'll put the cut off pieces down in the pouch, keep going, and then I'll dump them out in the bucket and we just throw them away. You can't reuse these because there's too much bacteria in them. So that's one trip through. And then uh, the next trip through, you actually come with new spouts. 
like these guys. It's the exact same thing. It's just right brand here. new. So this guy, this is a spout and this will go into the tree. This will actually go into the tubing. So there it is, buddy. So at this point in the process, you've already had to walk through the entire woods one time to cut old spouts off. Now you're going back through and putting your new spouts on. And they just squeeze into the line like that. Boom, then you're ready to go. Then you have to come back through again, tap so you find, drill a hole in your tree somewhere where, I mean, you, I don't know if you can see, but there's old holes there, there, there. So I would probably actually go underneath and to the backside. But uh, the other thing is that this, this drop is a little short. So I would actually use some of this extra tubing I got to make it a little longer. So there's like three total trips through the woods just to get it all tapped. Then you have to come back through and, and actually uh, fix all your leaks. So what we're going to is these guys. So this is a brand new drop with what they call a stubby adapter. One end has this stubby adapter on it. The other end has this T. And I have the, I actually have the spouts for these. I didn't think to bring one over, but there's another, a different type of spout. It's the same thing on the tree end, but instead of uh, having a 90 degree turn and a hose barb to go into your tubing, it just has a piece that fits over your adapter here. So the idea is instead of going through every year, cutting these off, putting a new one on, you just get new adapters. Then when you pull your taps out of the tree at the end of the season, you throw away the adapter and you just put a new one on every season. So instead of taking three trips through the woods to get the job done, you take one, but it takes a little longer. So the actual tapping with a, a stubby like this takes a little bit longer, but it's less overall labor. Your man hours are like about a third of what it takes to get the traditional spouts done. And they're not that hard to change. So when we come through to change these, all we're gonna do, I'm gonna take my LOAC two hand tool here and I'll come up to an old drop Cut it out. There's your old one. And then I'm just gonna put the new one in just exactly the same way the old one was. Kinda gets in the way if you have it tangled up there. There you go. Now that one's ready to tap. All we gotta do is come back through with a drill and an adapter and we can put that right in the tree. You can also see this drop is way, way longer. I can reach stuff on this tree that I couldn't reach before, which is important because when you're tapping, you have to stay away from your old holes. Now you can definitely see with this GoPro. You go there, there. Uh, I had another one down in here somewhere. But anyways, because according to UVM, you get what you call as a call the staining column there. It's discolored wood that happens as a result of tapping the tree. So when you tap it, you punch a hole in it, you basically wounded that tree. It needs to heal. When it heals up, it basically scars. You get darkened wood. It's what UVM calls the uh, staining column. They've done research that shows that on average, the staining column is eight inches horizontal and 24 inches vertical meaning if you want to tap and stay out of that staining column into good sapwood, you have to be at least four inches vertically away from the hole and at least 12 inches, no, sorry, at least four inches horizontally away from the hole, at least 12 inches vertically away from the hole because it extends 24 total. So having these new longer drops is really going to help us be able to get some better sap production and speed us up. Sweet. We decided to make the, uh, the investment. Yeah, and I think it'll pay off. Yeah. Well, we'll find out. Who knows? But I think that's all I needed for drops. Um, I don't actually work. I just make YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the, on my live stream last night, it was a, uh, have you tapped yet? I saw it, yeah. Did you watch a little I, bit? I just watched a couple minutes of it. And they're like, I said, somebody's got to ask me, Nate, did you tap yet? No, I've been too busy making YouTube videos, <laughs> which is funny because it's true. 
Well, geez, I was figuring when you asked if you're tapped yet, everybody was going to be like, yeah, we're tapped. What? You're so far behind. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, but, so this is where we're going to do the jumpers. Let's go over and look where our jumpers yeah. are going to be. A lot of ladders, Austin. Yeah, there are. So this is probably one of our, I would bet this is one of our sets that has the most. You got, a, I mean, a four star set on this one. Yeah. So here it is. And what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to put a jumper up and over to this one inch one inch line in this there case you know. we could maybe just no i guess not say we could maybe just cut it in where the valve is but i, don't, I think you probably want to keep that valve so you I like probably, plastic valves austin i like having a valve yeah uh, i have had i think consistently about one valve a year fail yeah. for the last three seasons same uh believe it or not with gripples i've yeah. had at least one gripple fail in the last three seasons but they're what 10 years old yeah i know where there's one in the woods right now that it just they lose their grip let go and it's kind of a pain to fix but it is it is what it is they're quick and easy enough to put on andy humphrey was showing me some sort of like a twisty tie thing i think that's what savages use it looks like a metal twizzler yeah yeah savages is using i never and they did say play. they don't give away yeah that's what they were telling me is they're like these 384 things, piece they're a little more but if they don't break on you yeah it's easier to splice those i bet i think so all right cool so there's our sap tanks and our cameras there to watch the place and i'm not gonna tell you where they are <laughs> at an undisclosed location yeah. hey thanks for stopping by uh the channel's been growing really faster than it ever has it's uh, kind of exciting all that ground that we've been plowing to finally see a harvest it's actually kind of nice um but uh you know if you uh if you like maple syrup you should hit that like button if you love maple syrup you should subscribe so yeah we got more maple syrup content coming out the guys have been out tapping um ralph and i are here picking up a box truck because we are headed to vermont to pick up some syrup and we are actually heading up to montreal to drop off some um barrels some used maple barrels so that's gonna be fun um yeah uh thanks for stopping by and we'll catch you on the next episode Two hundred thousand miles on this trusty steed hi silver <laughs>